Trailing the Hunter's Moon is presented by Ruger Rugged Reliable Firearms Hornady Accurate Deadly Dependable Trichicon Brilliant Aiming Solutions Wildlife Systems Serving hunters and landowners since 1987 DSC Conservation Education and Protecting Hunters Rights Welcome to the Glass Mountains here in West Texas. We're back out here. This is the third time for the fall. It's actually uh, it's actually late winter. It's uh, end of January, and we were back out here back in October and September hunting the Transpecus elk and pronghorn antelope with wildlife systems, and now we're back to hunt all dad's sheep. And I'm hunting with Jackie Murphy, who's part of the wildlife systems team, Mr. All Dad himself. He's a very passionate all dad hunter. Loves hunting these glass mountains himself and loves taking sheep hunters for their experience chasing the, the all dad or some of us call them the poor man's bighorn. But uh, this is my first time to hunt all dad sheep here in this mountain range in this area of Texas. I've hunted them all south of here, probably about 150 miles along the Devil's River and in that region. But uh, I'm excited. It's a beautiful day. It's our first afternoon. Weather's supposed to change on us tomorrow. It's gonna to get colder and windy and maybe a little bit of moisture, but I'm looking forward to these next several days climbing this mountain range. They are spread out. Yeah, they're spread out. They go all the way to the right. <laughs> Pretty good ways. There's two, Jackie, did you see the two? I, I guess they would be the furthest ones to the right. They're a little bit higher. One standing by Soto. I guess he's not that big. They just looked a little bigger at first. Body wise, but. Just kind of been looking over some country here. We just made a move. We glassed a hillside face of a, some cliffs right here behind us. You want to get closer? Not much, but I, it's, I don't think I can get the spot and scope on them. Yeah, I can see these a lot better now the way they're, they're spaced out. I don't. No. It, it's, I'm not picking out a jumbo. Yeah. You want to make several them, the same size, right, yeah. but not. And you want them to be there, but he's not there. He's not. <laughs> you know, this is big country out here in West Texas. Like I said, we're hunting the Glass Mountains. Fortunately, the ranch that we're on has some road systems through it. This is a working cattle ranch, and. And uh, there's a lot of man-made water here on the ranch, which is why this ranch holds a lot of wildlife. There's not a lot of water in this desert country. Pretty much this, this area, this region of Texas hasn't really had hardly any rainfall in, in a year, literally. Uh, the name of the, the game here basically is to spend a lot of hours behind the glass. Hunting these all dad sheep up here, we're fortunate enough on this property to be able to utilize a vehicle because of the man-made roads to get around and glass a lot of these hillsides and the edge of these canyons. But uh, for the most part, once we once we spot a ram that we want to go after, it is going to be a foot hunt. Lots of time behind the glass the next four days, and uh, we'll cover a lot of country while we do that as well. the first afternoon and I sure do like that we found some sheep in this big country. How do I know what I'm looking for? This segment of DSC's Trailing the Hunter's Moon is brought to you by 
double nickel taxidermy. Yeah, this morning we woke up to to rain. Seems to just be my luck. It hadn't rained all year, 12 months, I think their annual rainfall for 2020 was three inches of rain. Here it is, middle of January, 2021. And uh, we woke up to rain, so it's delayed us. We've got a low ceiling. It's made it real hard to try to find sheep. And being in the desert, these sheep don't get much rain. They're probably wondering what's falling from the sky. They've, they've, they've found a place to hide and we can't find them. But um, looks like it's gonna break. And I think if we can get a little bit of sunshine, I think the animals and the critters will get up and start moving around. We're gonna keep looking. Hopefully we get a break here. It's interesting when you hunt the desert like this and you have a drastic change like moisture. It really throws, in my opinion, the, the wildlife movement off until you start to get that sunshine back out. I mean, the, all dead sheep are a high desert region animal. They original territories from northern Africa and the country of Chad where it's very hot, very hot climate year round. So they do well here in this part of West Texas because it is hot here normally. It's middle January, it's only 50, 55 degrees. But you throw in any kind of moisture and rain and they seem to lock up for a while. More sheep moving above him, going up a little higher. I don't really want to get. There he is. Oh, did he come out? He's, yeah, he's he's gonna almost be up over on this next little oh, face. That's not good. Oh, you see him? Yeah, he stands out. He may go up in there and lay down. I kind of like that they are up against this steep rim rock. The wind is straight out of the northeast. That little baby keeps falling down. Jackie spotted a, a group of sheep up this draw here. They've been they came off this this little hilltop and down into a saddle, and uh, we spotted a ram that is the type of ram we've been been looking for. He's got everything. He's got the mass. He's got the length and the curl and big heavy chaps, and he's in a good spot. The problem is we don't know if we have enough daylight to get to him and to get set up and get a shot. Right now, we've, they've just disappeared over the ridge and into the, the backside of that canyon. But what you're saying, Jackie, is, is they're probably gonna stay here now. And we may just be better off to wait until tomorrow morning. We, we've got a cold northeast wind. It is, it's getting cooler. And it's getting cooler. I can't imagine they, they want to leave here. They're in a protected space, so there's some risk to, to coming back, but I think they're going to be here in the morning where we have all day to work with them. Whereas we could take the chance and rush it, try to get up there and spook them and blow them out of there, and then we're, we're done. Right. You, He's gone. We, <laughs> you don't get multiple opportunities with these sheep. This segment of Trailing the Hunter's Moon is provided by Ripcord Rescue Travel Protection. We got your back.
Hi, I'm Greg Simons with Wildlife Systems. Audad sheep were originally introduced to the Texas wilds in 1957. It was a joint effort by the Texas Parks and Wildlife Department, Texas A&M University, and a private landowner up near Claude. Today we have free-ranging sheep, not only in the Panhandle, but parts of the trans Pecos and parts of Central Texas as well, as various other high-fence places. These animals are very unique anatomically in that they have both sheep and goat-like characteristics, but genetically and morphologically, they're a bit more like a goat than a sheep, although they're referred to as a sheep. One of the nice benefits of Audads is they provide a great economic benefit for the landowner who wants to sell hunts to hunters to have access to those properties that then place those landowners in a position to have additional monies to reinvest into their property that benefits a myriad of different types of wildlife species. We put some sheep to bed yesterday evening. Uh, it had two really big rams in it, and so we have gotten back into the same area early this morning. And and they're in the same area. Jackie's picked them up in the spot and scope. But um, the positive side to this is it's it's a new day and it's early in the morning, so we have all day to kind of play them out. Whereas we ran out of daylight yesterday when we made a move on. We are going to finally get our chance to try to make a stock on these rams. They're probably about a thousand yards from us right now. But if they hold tight to where we last left them, I think we can get just on the opposite side of them and have a little elevation. Fingers crossed this works. shaking. I've waited for this opportunity for so long. We have finally have gotten, we're probably 175 yards from a big ram that is bedded down. I think he's big. And I want Jackie to confirm. We're this close to pulling this off. Jackie, those bigger rams on the le on the left, yes, they they're are. much bigger. That one's got a that one wider frame. Sheep's got that blonde triangle on its nose. And that real there's a really dark sheep that's a good sheep yeah. too. I know they're not in the best spot, but all we got a chance to do is go straight at them if the wind's right. We'll check wind all the way there. I think it'll work, actually. I'll just follow your lead on this. Let's just, let's just take a chance.
This segment of Trailing the Hunter's Moon is provided by the Texas Trophy Hunters Association, the voice of Texas hunting. Kinetrek, boots for the trail less traveled. MB Ranch King blinds, built in pursuit of perfection. Double nickel taxidermy. And by Ripcord, rescue travel protection. We got your back. Walking right. If you have a shot. I don't see the right side of the bush. Going right. Right there. No shot. I don't have a shot. Every time he stops, he's just covering his vitals behind with some brush. I need to either turn left or walk up a little higher. He's walking now. Now going up. The right one. Okay, ready? Right there. He won't stop. Right Fuck, there. there's a tree in my limb. Right there. He's the middle one facing us. Facing right. Are you ready? I'm shaking like a leaf. Clay, you're the one that kept your eyes on him and said the last one, the last one, and I had to hold high. I'm about to lose it. it should just be about right on top of this little flat, 30 yards or so, Jackie. Should be right there. There he is. You see him? Yeah. Right behind the Soto. Oh, yes. Yes, sir. Get that old body sheep. He's buried in the dirt, buddy, but. Yep, way back. Rifle is empty. There ain't nothing wrong with that sheep, buddy. There ain't nothing wrong with He's that sheep. Lots of mass. Holy cow. He's got mass to the end. It's an old, old sheep. I'm shaking, holding him up. Jackie, we pulled it off. We did. We did. We pulled it off. Challenges of just fog and rain, which you know, and you told me coming into the sun on the first day that we don't want a lot of rain because if we get uh, fog and low ceiling, it's hard to see these sheep up high. Really and, tough. And when it cleared, we found a lot of sheep up high, but what we learned is the older rams we were looking for, we found actually in a lower elevation. 
down in the bottom and all this cover. Yeah, and uh, we sat on this ram all morning since 7.30. Yes. It's four o'clock now <laughs> in the afternoon. So again, I wanna thank you so much for for your patience and persistence and people who've never mounted mountain hunted for goats or sheep, you gotta have patience. Yes, you do. You gotta have it patience. It may be the key ingredient. Just right? because you can see them doesn't mean you can kill them. Right, it is exactly right. Thank you again. I really do appreciate it. Thank you so much.